Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to the house of the Lord. It is beautiful to worship together and to remember that we are all one family in Jesus Christ, no matter why you came today or how you came, where you decided to sit, whether you're an old timer, a new timer, whatever your status, you are loved and the Lord had a purpose in your being here today. And we extend love to those who are watching by drive up or virtually online. You are part today of the worshiping family of God and for that we rejoice. Please remember to text me any joys and concerns you might have, and that applies to you all as well. Please feel free, if you have a prayer concern, to text me, and my number is in your bulletin on the insert. Today is the first Sunday in November, but it's not a five-Sunday month. But you know, when the men sang for the fifth Sunday, helping the choir with the introit, I could see on the faces of all the women in the congregation consternation that we had skipped them at the first Sunday in October. Never fear. We are a congregation that ministers to all God's children. So, Marie Peacock will be offering the intro today. But, after the welcome, I will invite the women of the congregation, our first Sunday singers, to come forward, turning to page 413 in their hymnals, and standing and singing with Marie. And that way we can reclaim a little bit of something that has been a Lafayette tradition. At this time, I would like to call forward Suzanne Corda. She has exciting news about a pen pal opportunity. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm excited to be here to talk to you today about a program that we have decided to try to kick off with Buck Lake Elementary School, one of their most favorite language arts teachers, uh, most favorite is, you know, perfect English grammar, right? Um, one of, uh, you can ask Sophie, I think probably her favorite language arts teacher was her fifth grade teacher, Miss Billy. And she's interested in starting a pen pal program with all of her students. And I think Lafayette is a perfect group to engage in that project. Um, now, she has 73 kids, <laughs> so I would like to know if any of you would like to volunteer to be part of the program. Um, it's really going to be pretty simple, and I think it would be really rewarding. Um, all of her kids, she's going to teach her kids about letter writing, and I think she'll give them prompts every month, and they'll give us letters, and then we'll respond to those letters, and over the course of the school year, I think we'll build some really neat relationships with some local kids. Um, I think the effort on your part is pretty light. You're going to get some sweet notes and you're just going to respond to them. And you can have one or more pen pals, however many you think you can keep up with. You know, if you have a few, it's a matter of just writing a few letters a month. Um, so I think it'd be super if you all could volunteer to help out. I've got these volunteer sheets and Susie has a copy. Um, she's gonna, she'll have it at the back door when you leave, <laughs> and so I'll be up here, <laughs> I can kind of like hang out here, um, and Susie will be in the back, and um, we look forward to talking with you about it. So in the next few weeks, I should have letters from the kids to start this off. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne, but there's only one question inquiring minds want to know. Can we write the letters in cursive? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sounds great. 
I need to read the call for the congregational meeting. In accordance with the Book of Order, a congregational meeting is called for next Sunday, November 13th, to receive the report of the nominating committee, elect elders and deacons, to elect an interim pastor nominating committee, and to elect a church nominating committee for 2023. By order of the session, Marie Peacock, clerk. Next Sunday is Veterans Day Sunday, and the Finance Committee and the Mission Committee together will have a time of fellowship after worship in the fellowship hall. Now, it's not going to be a meal. It's going to be like coffee and donuts, and um, never fear, however, I have not attended any fellowship events at Lafayette, but that there wasn't much more than promised, so uh, please... Join them. I know they're going to be glad to host you. And, of course, we'll be glad to celebrate on that Sunday our veterans. Stewardship season is past. It was the month of November. Of course, all year we're called to be Christian stewards. And the theme this year of our stewardship campaign was... Unexpected blessings. That's actually a pretty good response, you know, for a Presbyterian church. <laughs> uh, I'll bet you that if they asked at First Tallahassee what their stewardship campaign theme was, I'll bet it wouldn't have been so robust an answer. Anyway, there were unexpected blessings all throughout the month. Chalices, cards, flowers, crosses. And I'm glad that many chose to leave their crosses up for this week. And we reminded ourselves that God fills our lives with unexpected blessings. I wanted to let you know that the olive wood crosses that you received last week, I didn't have time to tell you last week. This was a, an Arab Christian shopkeeper that we met on our first trip to Bethlehem. And we came three years later, three years later, and he came running out of the shop and remembered me by name and where I was from. And we built a wonderful bond. And those crosses are handmade by Bethlehem Christians, and there are not many of them left. They're under great persecution. It is olive wood, the wood that was most probably the wood used in the cross of Jesus' crucifixion. And... When I wanted to order these, he gave me a price so low that I was almost ashamed to pay him because he wanted the witness of Bethlehem Christians to go out into the world. And over the years, I have been giving them to my most precious relationships, people that have really blessed my life. And... I realized I'm retiring in at the end of January. Who's more precious to me than my beautiful congregation? And so that's why I shared them with you last week. But I wanted you to know the back story. Now, unexpected blessings. That was November, right? But... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. That was October, right? See, uh, that was unexpected, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, unexpected blessings was October, right? But you were expecting unexpected blessings then. So here's an unexpected blessing for the first Sunday in November. What I have in my hand is water from the Jordan River that Susie and I collected. And so... After the introit, as the women return to the pews, I'm going to go down each aisle, and I would like to bless all of those who would want to be blessed. And what I'll do is I'll either put some water on your forehead or on your wrist, depending on your preference. And now, there's nothing magic about this water, but I want us to just have a brief moment where that water reminds us that we are directly related to Jesus Christ. 
Christ, we will be touched by the waters in which Jesus was baptized. And I will be saying a prayer for each of you, a silent prayer as we uh, pass through. Another blessing, this one was an unexpected blessing you weren't expecting. And I do want to remind everybody about pledges. We have something very special here at Lafayette, but we really need to invest in it. And it helps us so much if you fill out pledge forms. That way we don't have to guess what you might be giving. If you haven't filled one out or you lost yours, there are copies in the narthex on the table. How will you be an unexpected blessing? at Lafayette Presbyterian Church. And now it is time in the worship service for our intro, and I would invite women to come forward, uh, any that are able or willing. Bring, hymn. bring your hymn book, number 413, and we'll give you time to come forward. And Marie has to be where she is, so just gather around.
Lord, we thank you for the touch that reminds us that we are connected, not simply spiritually, although our hearts soar knowing that you love us, but we are also connected tangibly by a chain of love and relationships. And with the baptismal waters of the Jordan upon us, we feel that you are there ever closer to us as we walk with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us continue the worship of Almighty God.
Sam Frazier, recovering from hip and back issues. Alan Tucker asked that we pray for Rita as she has a heart procedure on Tuesday. And last, Jean Brinson asked that we pray for her son-in-law, Keith McCain, in Alabama. He had lung cancer surgery and is on chemo. And Keith has the chemo. Doug Pitts would like us to pray for Ashley and the baby. She had to go to the hospital in Georgia early yesterday morning due to an elevated heart rate. Everyone is fine now, and she should be going home this morning. But let's keep them in our prayers. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord, sometimes we are ignorant of the immediacy and the transitory nature of our existence. We don't like to face that change comes, whether welcome or not. We don't like to think that someday we will cease to exist in this earthly walk. We don't believe we will be limited or hurting or in need of help from others. We try to ignore anything that would keep us from being the center of our own universe. And yet, when we look back over our lives, we can see times and places where we needed others. It may have been an illness or an injury or a hospitalization. It may have been emotional comfort. It may have meant that we leaned on someone in a time of grief. And at each juncture, we can now say, oh, thank you, Lord, for being present, for upholding us, for strengthening us, for encouraging us, for giving us hope. And yet, in this present moment, and as we move into the future, we once again try to take the wheel. God, it was really wonderful having you steer there for a while. Lord Jesus, putting our trust in you, that was a great idea. Now let me steer things for a while. Let me go where I want to go and do what I want to do. Let me be blissfully ignorant of the time to come or the time that may be around the next corner. Lord, we pray that you would give us a deeper vision, a more complete vision. Lord, help us to be discerning and caring and understanding. For those that have not yet cast their ballots, Lord, lead us to study candidates and issues, not simply from the standpoint of our own ideology, but in terms of what it means to be human, to share, to give, to understand, to appreciate, to forgive, and to be generous. Lord, we thank you for this worship service. We thank you that we have felt a tangible tie between our lives and yours. But we thank you that our relational covenant is strong and unyielding because you love us utterly and thoroughly. And for this we thank you. And God, we thank you in Jesus' name, even as we pray the prayer he taught us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Joyously, let us be unexpected blessings as we bring forth God's tithes and our offerings. Some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him and asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers, the first married and died childless, then the second, and the third married her, and so in the same way all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. And Jesus said to them, Those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage. But those who are considered worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore, because they are like angels and are children of God being children of the resurrection. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. pray. Lord, 
we ask you to write these words of Scripture on our hearts that we might find their place in our lives. Amen. A glimpse into heaven, and I want to talk about heaven today. We don't talk about heaven much in daily life. One theologian who was a professor of mine in seminary shook his head and said, I hardly ever hear people talk about heaven unless they're eating cheesecake. <laughs> and C.S. Lewis said, we ought to be talking about heaven. It's not simply pie in the sky when we die, but it is the core foundational promise of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. If you can't talk about heaven, said C.S. Lewis, you have nothing to say in this present day. There was a Sunday school class and the teacher was waxing eloquent to her third graders about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how much Jesus loves them. And that Jesus had a place for them in heaven. And she said, children, how many of you want to go to heaven? And every hand shot up. Except little Johnny. The teacher turned and looked at Johnny and said, Johnny, don't you want to go to heaven someday? And he said, oh, someday, I thought we were going now. <laughs> we have many ideas about heaven, and some of them are quite strange. You know, I'm not sure I want to spend eternity with angels fluttering around with golden harps and trying to maneuver over gold cobblestone streets. But those are merely images to seek to bring some of what is beautiful in this life into our imaginations. The truth is we know very little about heaven. One prominent theologian described heaven as an unknown region with a well-known inhabitant. And of heaven another spoke poetically. My knowledge of that life is small. The eye of faith is dim. But it's enough that Christ knows all, and I shall be with him. Today's scripture passage is so precious. Now you might be thinking, what? The Sadducees are trying to trap and trick Jesus by giving him an almost impossible scenario. You know, okay, if a husband married, you know, I was thinking that poor wife marrying seven brothers, she would she deserved to die just to get some rest, you know. Uh, but that's one of those hypothetical, theoretical things where you're trying to trick someone or trap them. So how can this passage be so precious? Well, it's because it's one of the few examples of Jesus speaking directly about heaven. And you may ask, since this is the great reward of Jesus' promises, why didn't Jesus say more? Well, if you've noticed in the Gospels, Jesus doesn't waste much time on teachings which you and I won't understand anyway. He offers the promise, the vision, hope. But for those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, we have clues, visions of heaven upon which to pin our hope. Jacob had a vision of a ladder between heaven and earth in the book of Genesis. And we know that Jesus is that ladder which spans the gap between heaven and earth. A bridge, if you will. Moses and the burning bush where God revealed that he is the God whose name is I Am. Moses, Aaron, and the elders experiencing the presence of God in Exodus. Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 6, saw also 
the Lord sitting upon a throne, and Stephen, the blessed follower of Jesus, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God in the book of Acts. But we still want to know, what did they see? What did they experience? Inquiring minds want to know. Well, what does the nature of God teach us about heaven? If we know God, oh, we realize, don't we? If we know God, that heaven will surround us and embrace us, even as does God's love. We know from God's very nature that God will nurture and sustain. We know that from God's commands, heaven will be fruitful. Glimpses of heaven. What about the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit teach us about what heaven must be like? Well, the Holy Spirit reminds us that God is love. The Spirit whispers these truths in our ears. That the God of creation walks with us. The Holy Spirit is always with us. That God is faithful. The Spirit is ever present. And so we see another glimpse into heaven. What does the Lord Jesus Christ teach us about heaven? I think the most important lesson that Jesus shares here and throughout his ministry is all about relationships. Heaven isn't about places. It isn't about events. It is about the experiences, the joys, the interconnectedness, oh yes, the covenant of relationship. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And that will happen, not here on earth, we strive after it. Where will that be? Where will that truth be fulfilled? Heaven. Heaven is personal. Jesus said, I tell you, many will come from east and west and sit at the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. You don't need to get a backstage pass. You don't have to have brought the most valuable resources with you when you go to heaven. You don't have to impress anyone. You don't have to know somebody to meet somebody. Oh, yes, we'll be at that table. Can you imagine sharing that table with Father Abraham? Can you imagine, after all the jokes people tell about St. Peter at the pearly gates, can you imagine, along with Peter and all that have followed Christ from the beginning, we will be face to face with our God. We learn from Jesus that heaven doesn't wait for us. Our God takes the initiative. Jesus says in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you. A place, a very special place for you. Now, not as we understand it. It is a relational heaven. But isn't it wonderful to know that God's preparing we're not going to catch God by surprise. We're not going to get there and have St. Peter go through the book and say, well, I'll have to go back and check. We haven't updated these today. And what do we learn from Jesus? Christ is the door. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Anyone who finds salvation no matter who they are, where they are, how they grew up, how they've learned, how they've acquired knowledge, 
no matter what their faith or depth of faith, if you find salvation, it will be through the door of Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus teaches us that heaven means we will live because our God is a God of the living. And in today's glimpse of heaven, I don't know if it's good news or bad news that he says there won't be any marriage. But what he's trying to do, you see, the Sadducees have it all down legalistically. And the pattern of marriage that the Sadducees would have advocated was loveless and oppressive and it would endorse where women are property, where there are rules, contracts, and arrangements between family instead of love and relationship, instead of commitment and joy. What Jesus is saying, it isn't going to be like that. Oh, but you will love those that are cherished in your life more deeply than you could have in this earthly walk. Because you will know them and love them the way God loves them. And you will feel that love. We will fulfill the Genesis promise of being made in God's image. Our relationships will be as blissful as they would have been before the fall. Nothing will be forgotten or diminished but all will be fulfilled. Heaven will be free. No anxieties, fears, hurts, no boundaries or rules, no hidden agendas, no loneliness, no betrayals, no grief, no disappointment. The relationships you cherish will be rewarding beyond earthly limitations. But without envy or jealousies, they will be shared, celebrated. Each of our relationships will be as if it were a tributary flowing into a river of joy. We will know that our God is a God of the living. We will know and be known, embrace and be embraced, love and be loved, trust the promises. Know that how it will be is less important than who it will be. Rejoice in this heavenly glimpse into eternity. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for a peek into heaven, a glimpse into eternity. We thank you that your promises are all about relationship and life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In body or in spirit, stand with me as we offer our hymn of parting. God of grace. God of glory.
the beautiful promise of heaven. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen. God has shown us what is good. What does the Lord require of us but to seek justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God? Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised.